Saul Bellow's novel Seize the Day is the story of one day in the life of Tommy Wilhelm, a man in his mid 40s who is going through a midlife crisis. As the book opens, he is standing outside of the dining room in the residential hotel in which he lives, contemplating his troubles and working up the courage to go in to breakfast. and faces his father who also lives in the gloriana hotel wilhelm reminiscences about how he left school 25 years ago in order to go to hollywood to try to become a movie star he had at first been approached by a talent scout morris venice but even after the screen test went badly and the scout tried to discourage him wilhelm decided to change his name to tommy wilhelm from wilhelm adler and go to california once there he discovered that morris venice was himself a failure and that a recommendation from him was a curse he nevertheless stayed in hollywood for 7 years unwillingly to admit defeat now 25 years later he finds himself unemployed broke and in despair he is separated from his wife but she refuses to give him a divorce he has invested his last money in the commodities market and he fears it is all lost and he is endlessly quarreling with his father who refuses to help wilhelm and who seems to be ashamed of his son still working up the courage to face his father at breakfast wilhelm collects his mail he has received a number of bills including some from his wife who wants him to pay the premiums on some educational insurance plans for their two boys he finally goes into breakfast where his father introduces him to an elderly man named mr pearls they have a quarrelsome breakfast with dr adler feeling ashamed of his unemployed and slovenly son and wilhelm resenting his father's unwillingness to help him in any way Dr Adler presses his son to tell Mr Pearls about his former job as a salesman which he lost after quarreling with his employers. Willem is disgusted with how focused on money his father and Mr Pearls are. Dr Adler and Mr Pearls begin discussing Dr Tamkin another resident of the hotel and the man to whom Willem had trusted to invest his last $700 in the commodities market the two older men feel that tamkin is a fraud and a fool and as he listens to them wilhelm again begins to worry about his money mr pearls leaves and wilhelm and his father continue to argue wilhelm reveals how he tried to get a divorce so that he could marry another woman olive but his wife continually refused to give him the divorce wilhelm recites many of his problems but his father does not sympathize feeling that everything is the result of wilhelm's poor choices and not wanting to be burdened with caring for his adult children in his last few years his parting advice to wilhelm is carry nobody on your back after leaving the dining room wilhelm seeks out tamkin they head to the commodities market to see how their stocks have done Wilhelm spends the conversation trying to figure out whether Tamkin is trustworthy or not. They discuss many philosophical matters and Wilhelm is attracted to the doctor's ideas, especially his philosophy about living in the present and seizing the day, but he is suspicious of Tamkin nonetheless. They arrive at the commodities market and take their place next to some friends of Tamkin. Wilhelm becomes nervous about the money. and when he sees that some of their shares have risen he wants to sell and recover to at least some of their lost money tamkin insists that they should leave their shares alone and he says that wilhelm needs to learn to trust and to live the here and now as tamkin tries to show him some methods for focusing on the here and now wilhelm wonders if the doctor is trying to hypnotize or con him They go to lunch and discuss Wilhelm's problems with his wife and father. Wilhelm realizes that although Tamkin is probably a charlatan, he also believes that Tamkin has managed to survive for a long time 
and he hopes that perhaps he can help him to survive as well he begins to feel that he is on tamkin's back trusting the other man to take the necessary steps for him they return to the commodities market but before they can enter mr rapaport an old man who was sitting next to them earlier greets them he demands that wilhelm take him to the cigar store and when wilhelm protests that he wants to check on his commodities tamkin pushes him to go with rapaport insisting that he can learn a lot from the elderly man when he returns from the cigar store wilhelm finds that his commodities have dropped so far and that he has lost all his money tamkin is nowhere to be found wilhelm comes to the painful realization that it was he that had been carrying tamkin on his back he goes to his father to ask for help but his father refuses him yelling at him and telling him that he will not support his grown children wilhelm reminds him that there are other things besides money that a father can give a son but his father refuses to listen he says that he will see wilhelm dead before he will allow his son to become a cross for him to bear wilhelm goes in search of tamkin he receives an urgent message from his wife fearing that something has happened to one of his boys he calls her she is angry that he has sent her a post dated check they quarrel and she blames him for the separation and for his unemployment he resolves that he will find tamkin and at least recover the 200 dollars that the doctor owed him he hopes that he will be able to start again with olive the woman he wanted to marry searching for tamkin he comes across a funeral procession and he thinks that he sees tamkin in the crowd as he tries to get closer he is swept into the church and eventually finds himself looking at the dead man in the casket he is overwhelmed by grief at the death of the stranger he sobs uncontrollably and the other mourners wonder who he is and how he knew the deceased willem only continues to sob